Hey folks, how you doing? Captain Mark. North Atlantic, the jig bite in the fall. That's what this one's about. I'm gonna be putting this young lady to sleep right now. So stay tuned. Let's go out to the boat for the intro this time. I want to miss you from God right now. Can you hear me? I'm not sure this will be the I'm not sure this will be the open a bit, Mike. What did you just say? What we're doing is we came out of Fire Island Inlet. We're just chasing birds right now. A lot of the uh, fish on the machine. These fish are very small though. El pequeños. So we're looking for the pescado grandes aquí. Huh? I don't know. It's my Spanish for the day, right? Take care, everybody. Brush your hair, one of them. I gotta get in the game here. Where's my rock? Oh my, he loves sound effects. And he's off. And he's off. Alright, guys, these fish are thick downstairs. I mean, we easily caught a hundred of these, a hundred plus of these smaller fish. I mean, the, the boat you see in the background, I guarantee he caught a hundred. It's not as if we were doing anything better than they were, but we were just watching the machines, making sure we're on top of the fish and not just the birds. There's a fallacy that, you know, if the birds are there, the fish are there. It's not true necessarily. These fish bait could have been pushed to the top where the birds are attacking it, but doesn't necessarily mean there's fish under it. So you look at your machine, make sure there are fish under the birds and then say hello to them, all right? Usually we have them in there 20 plus pounds. <laughs> today, <laughs> not, not so today. Much. All right, last week, I look like a fat, you know what, in my uh, white slickers right now. And then, uh, this trip, I'm in the middle of de-hooking the fish. I catch my reflection. I almost called Batman. I thought the penguin snuck on board. <gasps> Well, identical is right. Fortunately, it was only Andy, and apparently he stuck the offshore life raft in his slickers just to, uh, as a safety precaution. I mean, not even Conor McGregor could pull that look off, right? <laughs> exactly, that's why I retired the white slickers. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me because there's atrocious wind blowing out here. But uh, I'm reaching out to the Massachusetts madman. Corey, your boy Steven gave me a holler, shout out of the week, and here you are, pal. Obviously, Steven's probably a primo employee for you guys right now, but uh, he needs you know what? Corey, Corey give, give him a, a raise. raise. What? He needs a raise, for God's sake, all right? Calls me up, asks you for a kind of shout out in your name, the masked madman, Corey D'Souza. There's your kind of shout out of the week, and I'm going to show you something even weird. I'm going to go back in the office and explain the rest of it. All right, back in the office right now. This kind of shout out got real weird, all right? What are the odds right now? And tell me if. I'm the only maniac that thinks this is strange. I get this email at three something from Corey Souza, and then I get this other thing at five something, the same day from the same part of the country, and it's from Corey D'Souza, all right? Makes no sense. I'm not sure what's going on over in Massachusetts if uh, you guys are uh, married within the families, but it's getting a little crazy right now. But that's a shout out right there. Right here is Corey Souza and his buddy Nick. Killing it for six hours straight, they said, on the Cape, uh, in the uh, canal over there, over in Cape, yeah, Cape Cod Canal. And the other one is Steve is sending him for his boss, Corey D'Souza, all right? Well, that's the whole thing. If you guys find that strange, I found it very strange, all right? Those emails, and now I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm going to get in trouble right now. Watch this. I'm out here making videos. Look who's out there working. She's out there, show. She's out there working, doing all the leaves. That's not good, all right? Uh, hold on, let's focus, let's focus. All right, let's focus back. All right, that's not good. 
Got to get this video done. I'm a day late. What else do I got to get here? All right, let's just go back to the boat. All right, let's go see the screen, what we're doing with here. Absolutely insane. Great fish ratio here. Every drop's a fish. Nothing crazy. Those are 30 inch fish we keep a couple for dinner. Andy's just hooked up. Is it a keeper? You think it's a keeper? Uh, it might be, actually. Are you nervous at all? Are you gonna drop this one? <laughs> He's dropped a couple of fish. A lot of them with sand eels. Redemption is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Come That's on. A <gasps> All right, guys, here we go. I'm just gonna drop the camera down. I have a hook on it, it's got a jig on it, all right? So, cause I'm a risky cat, all right? I'll, I'll, I don't mind losing my camera for the con to see the action. That's what I do, all right? I take those risks for the, the kid go cheese at those nation, baby. All right, dropped it down. These fish are on it, like Andy on a Snickers bar, all right? There it goes, right there, hook up, boom. Second guy comes, says hello to the camera. Let me slow that down for you guys again. Fish hits it, here comes the second fish. He's so aggressive, he smacks at my camera, takes a chunk out of it. But my camera's like, I'm a camera. And up this one comes upstairs, and that's a wrap on that one. All right? This is us all day catching fish, tripled up all day long. Again, this is not beating the chest here. A six-year-old could have went out there and did this, all right? The fish were so thick and so aggressive, they were biting everything. All right, so... That's it. Then we came into some bigger fish. Uh, nothing e enormous, but this is, uh, here comes a fish right now where I am on to, uh, you know, a keeper. And what we do is we're going to keep this fish. This fish is going back and it's going to become uh, dinner, all right? We don't mind that, you know. I have no issues taking that stuff. Uh, we're not going to wipe out the fishery, but there's no doubt about three of these fish are going to come home and uh, they're going to go to heaven, all right? And they're all good eating fish. What we do is we catch these fish, we bleed them immediately, and uh, that's a wrap. All right, so here we go. Me on another fish. A bigger fish. Guys, that's a 31 inch fish right there, and she's going to heaven, unfortunately, for that fish because that's dinner right there. It's a primo eating fish, especially when you bleed them properly. That fish was cash money. I right, don't That's gonna keep, right? All right, guys, dropping the camera again. Again, I am just dropping a heavy jig down there, and the camera is obviously right behind the jig. And I'm not even jigging this. If I jigged this, first of all, it would be very difficult and you'd be seasick watching it. So I'm just dropping it and the uh, boat's ripping because it's really windy out there. You really can't tell because I'm using dead cats on all the cameras. But when this bait hits the bottom, it's over. These fish are on it in two seconds. And again, this is just the uh, current making that the hook move. And that's enough for these fish just to blast it, all right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm dropping down and these fish are all over the place. We got a little bait ball right there. We got fish behind it right there. These are the fish looking, saying, hey, what are you doing up there? And then what we do is we go over there, and we're going to throw the hoagie out. There she is. All sexy as heck. Watch this. So these guys are fishing conventional stuff. The chubby kid drops down a hoagie. Match in the hatch. We're talking the sand deal bite right now. This thing mimics the sand deal like nobody's business. Drop to the bottom. Fish are marking close to the bottom, 55 feet of water.
fast I outfish the convention. <laughs> Jake that Kenny Scott with the hoagie. Hoagie truck. Oh, really? Alright, so now this is what we have, alright? The the rigs we're using are this right here. Very simple. That's the old school. It's a some it's somewhat of a hammer jig, it's really not, but the hammer jig's are very effective in the jig, alright? And I was using the Hoagie Heavy, right? This this one right here. Trust me, I'm not bragging by any means. Every boat that there caught a hundred fish easily. That's how thick it was. Alright, you see the underwater footage, you see this machines. I mean, you could easily catch these fish, it was obvious, alright? But I was using the hoagie heavy jig and I was dropping down. I caught so many fish that the treble was just, I mean, to have that problem really. I mean, you could complain. But what I did is now the following day, no, I'm sorry, a couple of days later, I went and fished the Trace Palms, which will be next video, is I switched out the treble for just a regular J hook because I was catching so many fish that the freaking fish were aggressively biting that hoagie and hanging up on, you know, the whole mouth would be covered in the treble which is great, great for albacore and stuff like that, but I just kind of knocked it off just so to save myself some time for reloading and re-getting that bait down there, hopefully for a bigger fish, all right? So that's what I did for the second set, but I was fishing that hoagie, and what's good about the hoagie or any other jig, you guys fish whatever jig you want. I personally would only endorse a great piece of tackle, and, and the hoagie lures are ridiculously freaking made. They're phenomenal, VMC hooks, uh, the, the epoxy and the heavy, it, it, you have to literally get one of these things and say, ah, right, damn, he's right on the money with this. Just like I do when I promote tidal tail jigs. There are other blackfish jigs out there. You buy them and then you buy the tidal tail and you say, hey, Mark is riding the money. This is a hundred times better than that stuff. I mean, people promote stuff that's just, it's just garbage, all right? So just buy beware and that's the perfect, that's that's really all I have to say about that. When you look at the hoagie jigs, the the, uh, the fit and finish and the quality that goes into this stuff, I would never tell my audience anything but that, all right? I'm not getting a million dollars from hoagies for saying that. I'm not getting a million dollars from tidal tails for saying that. But what I am doing is I'm telling the con out there that these are the things that are, are really good in the industry and that don't waste your money and don't lose the fish to crap all right that's what i'm saying all right so title tales hobbies money stuff that's good stuff right there all i'm asking you to do is just go out there look at it don't buy it look at it and then like here's this apples to apples and that's that title tales or, or hoagie money garbage and that's what it comes down to because that's what that's what fishing's all about you're gonna have fun fishing but if your tackle fails you're going to be pissed off, all right? And you don't want to be pissed off out there. It really kind of ruins things when you lose the fish of a lifetime to a piece of crap. Tackle. All right? Did I just go on a tear right there, blowing up a couple of those people? Yeah. Why do I love it? Because I dig him. I, I dig John Knight. The guy's phenom. He's a great guy. He's a, he's a mom and pop shop up there in uh, New Rochelle. Guy works his bean bag off, and he puts some phenomenal product out there. So stay the course, John. Michael Hogan, Mikey. Phenomenal stuff, what am I gonna tell you? Keep up the good work, pal. In case the dish made a moosh. All right, folks, as you know, this is just for beginner anglers that are just starting to jig bluefish, bass, and all the other stuff. I just wanna show you two different techniques that we use out there, okay? 
One technique, of course, is the uh, conventional old school jigging, which you're going to drop to the bottom, kind of work it up. But the other thing is called squidding, and squidding is very simple. I would squid personally if you have fish all the way in the column, just like you see in this photograph right here. That's not the machine, that's Tracy Sawyer from Virginia who's sneaking in a con shadow with a fake hat. If you have fish all the way up in the column, then you drop that jig down to the sea floor and squid it up. What I'll do is I'll drop that jig to the sea floor under the arm, of course, my left, engage, and then I just reel, 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 reel it up. You could change the speeds, but I would just start off fairly slow, all right? Just nothing crazy, just like that. This uh, jig is hitting the sea floor and it's gonna work its way up back in the column. That's when you're looking at your machine. You'll see I'm constantly looking at my machine to see what kind of fish and where these fish associate themselves in the column, all right? So when I see them all over the column, I'll just tell my guys, squid it for a while. You got them all in the whole column. Can you squid it up? You know, whack it up. You squid, you can jig, but squid it. So what happens is, uh, you'll see Andy right now, he's gonna hook up here with a squid. As he's reeling up, the fish is gonna nail it, all right? So squidding is a great technique, especially when you see all those fish in that column. Again, drop it to the sea floor and just reel up. Drop it back down, reel up. Drop it back down, reel up. It's starting to rain here, I'm getting the hell out of here. Oh boy. All right, I'm doing this in the rain. All right, now squidding is, I'm not doing this in the rain. I'm doing it, screw it. I'm staying with my crew here, my Kiko Cheese out those nations. He's so dedicated to his audience. All right, jigging the, on the other hand is when you're looking at that machine right now, when you're seeing all the life is at the really bottom of the, of the column. That's what, you know, striped bass usually hold. So what you'll do is you'll drop it to the sea floor, crank once, and just kind of go, whoosh, work it up, jig it up, jig it up. So that what that jig now is doing is jump it up, coming back down in the same strike zone. So up, and then feel as you go down. As you come up, let that rod tip lift down with the weight of the jig. So you, usually what's gonna happen is you're gonna feel that strike, especially when you're fishing braid like I do. You're gonna blast it up, and you're gonna work it back down, you're gonna feel that strike, you're just gonna go whack it right above, all right? So once you feel that that strike on the down drop, say hello to it, bam, blast them. Again, remember, same thing, I'm telling you, always doing this fulcrum thing, but I'm really strong on that fulcrum, all right? Right, left hand, or if you're, if you're righty, your left hand's above the reel, and then the other one's on the bottom, all right? And you're just gonna pop it up like that. So as you're jigging, you hit bottom, jig up, boom, work it back down. You'll usually feel a strike on the way down, blast it up on the strike and say hello to it, all right? That's it. Again, squidding, drop it to the sea floor, boom. You're gonna see those fish up in the column and you're gonna just reel it all the way up, boom. And that's it, all right? Once, you, once he's there, as you're reeling up, you're just gonna say hi to it. As, as you feel the drag on that strike, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. That's coming up, the fish is gonna say, hey, how you doing? And you're gonna feel it, you're just gonna give it an extra low, and you fight that fish just the same way you fight any other fish, all right? Those are your two techniques, jigging and squidding. I dig them both, all right? But this thing, we're just kinda jigging, all right? I love if I have my rod in the back here, stand by. I do have my rod, all right? This is what happens when you jig with a hoagie. You snap a rod half, all right? I was jigging in the tournament with this bad boy. Boom! Thing hit the hoagie jig, snapped my rod in half. Is that a good thing? It's a good thing if you got a hoagie jig and you like your hoagie jigs like I do, but still. It's no bueno when you snap a rod in half on a jig. Make sure you got enough tackle. This is a piece of crap rod. So, uh, I don't even want to tell you what it is. I don't even want to tell you what it is. But you get what you pay for, all right? Don't buy garbage, especially when you're starting the jig, because when you set the, when you say hello to those fish like I did, I mean, with this, the hoagie jig snapped into it, and I broke the freaking sh thing, snapped in half and blew up. All right, so make sure you don't go out there with crappy stuff, you know what I'm saying? So again, that's a pretty violent hook set when you're jigging because you don't even know he's there. You're just blindly setting hooks as, you, as you're doing that. So just beware. Don't fish with garbage like I did. Why did I do that? I don't even know. I'm fishing a tournament and I bring out garbage. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. Thank you for watching Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. I hope this video helped you guys out so you can uh, know the difference between squidding and. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs>
there's a it's, it's a it's a a cycle of life out there. The bigger fish come in the fall, and then they start to teeter off, and then they start to get small. The thirty, I mean, the big big girls are out there, and then they turn into the the thirties, and then they turn into the twenties, and then they turn into the micro fish. All right, right now the micro fish are out there. They're fun. There's a, it's great to see that the fishery is strong, and uh, all these fish are out there release very quickly, and that's that. I mean. I don't like, I keep going on a tear here. I apologize because this is a long video, all right? Hope you guys had uh, at least a cup of coffee when you watch this video. What? All right, Chubby Kids Guy Go I Want. Thank you for watching Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. Uh, if you have a moment, subscribe, but consider subscribing, all right? Shoot this stuff over to your friends. Make the con strong. And as my boy over Corey Souza says, con for life, baby. Gaze a dash. Thanks for watching. You know what, Chubby Kids Guy Go.